Hello and welcome to The New Normal with Steve Beniquist. Welcoming you to The New Normal. I'm New Normal and this is The Steve Beniquist. Well, today we've got a couple of things to talk about. Uh, on the fun side, to cap the show, I'll be telling you about an episode of Little House on the Prairie I saw last night with some fun moments with former Screen Actors Guild president, Half Pint, I mean Melissa Gilbert. But before we get to that, we'll be talking about the new normal of today, which is the end of alternative facts. We'll be right back with that after this. And we're back. So, the new normal, as I see it, is an end to alternative facts. It's been a long time coming, but uh, ever since Kellyanne Conway uttered those uh, ridiculous words together, which make no sense, uh, we've all buckled in as the media didn't really kick that hard at the notion. Uh, essays were written, but we did keep listening to alternative facts. Here's a tip, uh, journalists, when the word fact is used in your writing, uh, as in uh, the facts were incorrect that he stated, well, then they weren't facts. You can say statement. His statement was incorrect and non-factual. A fact is a fact. And uh, if you can't prove it, there's so many other words in this gigantic language we have. So dig around in your thesaurus. And, uh, and that goes for you bloggers too, since, since I'm one of you pretty much. Although, uh, hey, CNN, if you're watching, you see that I'm in a suit and a tie, have parted hair and a nice broadcaster's voice. Um, and, uh, and I don't have any advertisers at the moment. We are running purely on donations, but I'm getting distracted, which would never happen if I had a teleprompter and uh, cue card boys and all that stuff. I'm working alone here, except for Lyle Gerber, my executive producer. Anyway, back to the end of alternative facts. Um, what triggered this for me was seeing the Rudy Giuliani uh, uh, cavalcade of craziness that happened, and I know I could be talking about any press conference he's given in the last four years, but, um, and it really doesn't matter. I don't have to get specific, although let's just say there was uh, makeup or hair dye running down the side of his face, and someone pointed out that he wiped his face with the booger side of his, uh, you gotta look for this, it's worth seeing, of, of his handkerchief after mopping his face and blowing his nose. Anyway, it's so easy to get sidetracked. This is a five-minute program, and I'm not going to burden you with all the details, but um, the fact that a balding, graying, yes, graying, I know, Rudy, it may uh, shock the world to think that a 76-year-old man who's been in the public eye for 30 years, uh, and they know it, uh, has, <laughs> after your famous comb-over went away uh, 20 years ago, now you have the hair dye, and it's okay to dye your hair, but um, it's awkward if we keep seeing you go back and forth. And that goes for you too, Stephen Miller uh, and Donald Trump. Your hair color keeps changing. I think you allowed it to be white recently. It's going to be blonde again soon. Um, this is part and parcel of an administration that uh, it really does see the world in terms of alternative facts. At least I will contend uh, as far as they are willing to present it to the world. They know that what they're putting out there isn't true. Um, just as the person who wrote The Secret knows that that's bullshit too, okay? So the implication that if you're not rich, it's just because you're not dreaming hard enough is crap. And um, I would say this, that the, the Trump administration, if they really could will a world into existence of their own dreams, then look at what they've made and it's very sad. It's sad. A bunch of golf courses, cheating on your wife, getting married over and over again, miserable, angry all the time, uh, achieving nothing. What are the three things that Donald Trump will be remembered for in this presidency? I mean, the three, the three things he set out. There's no wall, there's no Muslim ban, and he did not repeal Obamacare, even though he had both houses of Congress on his side for two years. No. The reality that uh, has manifested itself uh, under the, the rubric of alternative facts are the real fact that Mitch McConnell and for a while Paul Ryan were his allies and it was only the things that they allowed and uh, abetted 
that made it through. Those are the things you will be remembered for in your presidency. The $1.5 trillion tax cut would be nice to have that money now, right? After we've had to um, come up with trillions of dollars to help save America and its businesses and people from crumbling to the ground. Uh, but we don't look ahead, do we, Donald? Five bankruptcies, Trump. Um, there's that. Uh, and there is... Um, Excuse me while I look at my notes. Oh, of course, all the judicial appointments. In fact, let's go back. Be nice to have that money, right? Uh, right about now, right after the, uh, the year of having to bail everybody out. And then there's... And then there are the judicial appointments, of course, including the three Supreme Court nominations, or appointments, I should say. Um, all of those were only because of Mitch McConnell in the Senate. Um, and, oh, of course, you not being convicted of the impeachment which you sustained. So Mitch McConnell should feature big in your thanks at Thanksgiving this year, Donald Trump. And, uh... I don't know what else to say. I, uh, I really do want to talk to you about Half Pint and that raccoon and all the fun moments, but that I think it'll have to wait till next time because we've run out of time. We've plum run out of time here on The New Normal with Steve Beniquist. Uh, if you like it, like us, subscribe to us, uh, roll around in us, love us, send us money through the Venmo and all that crap, or just think of us in your prayers. And until next time, I'm Steve Beniquist reminding you that if it ain't new, it ain't normal.